Hello everybody, I'm Roxy. This is Chaotic Bibliophile and I apologize for both my hair. I tried to take a nap and I failed miserably. And also this weird angle. It will all make sense, I promise. <laughs> Okay, so I'm filming this still at my quarantine room, although it will be up several weeks after I left, I think. Originally, I was going to film it when I was already at my new place, but the opportunity just arose while I was still in quarantine because I had to rearrange my luggage, waste not, want not. I've wanted to film this video and I've had this video in mind, title and all, since last year. In case you don't know, I've moved to London to study, I talked about it in my life update video which will be linked down below and in the eye as always, but I was meant to do it last year, which was impossible due to the whole pandemonium situation, so I am doing it now. This is the books she carried. Basically, I want to show you all the books I brought with me. A few ground rules before I show you this. First, I don't want you to ask me how I got all of these books across an ocean. Sacrifices were made, choices were made, some of them poorly, but I made them. I have my ways, I have a lot of practice lagging books around the world. Yes, it might be ridiculous, especially considering that some of these books I did effectively buy either in London or in Ireland or Europe. I don't care, I am a ridiculous human being. I've made my peace with that and I hope you have too. Number two, I don't want any comments on how ridiculous it is that I brought so many books considering that I am going to buy new books, not only because I always buy at least a book when I go to a new bookstore and I do plan to do some traveling and visit a few new to me bookstores, but also just because of the masters. I am doing a masters in literature and culture, so I am going to be reading a lot for that. Although surprisingly not as much as I expected, quick funny story, I thought I had two courses and I was going to have to do all the readings for both, and then as it turned out I had to choose. So the reading portion of it cut down significantly, which doesn't make me very happy, but I am happy that I'm not going to have to write as many essays because I like to take my time with essays. Without further ado, let me show you the books. Now, some of these books are actually for my master's. One of the ways I knew I had absolutely chosen the right master's program was that I had so many of the books that we were going to read because it's an area of literature that I'm so interested in. It's modern literature. There are more contemporary trends to the program, but in general it's all about modern culture and the city and urban landscape, so okay, let's just get on with it. In no particular order, Fernando Pessoa poetry collection, this is in Spanish, but of course Fernando Pessoa has been translated to English broadly and I'm sure his poetry has been as well. I would look up an English version to list down below, but I am not going to do that for this video because there are just too many books. I am currently halfway through this, so you will hear me talk more more about the poetry in here at the end of September, probably more towards the middle of uh, October, let's be real. I have another poetry collection called Extranjería by Pablo Jofre. This is a Chilean poet that I've never read before. I still, however, vividly recall buying this. This was one of the first books I bought when I started working. I was a teenager and I was also starting to just go about town. I remember being at a bookstore. I remember wanting to read this when I went on a trip and then forgetting to bring it to several very important trips. And the reason behind that is that this is about being a foreigner and living abroad and home and nature. And I am now so happy that I didn't read it before because I now get to read it in this very new, very special to me situation. I am so excited. It's also very slim, so it's the kind of collection you can read in one sitting. I have a chunker that I am very excited to get to and it's Lost Illusions by Balzac. Honestly, I think I will save this for the Christmas break, but I definitely want to get to this at the end of the year. I don't know if I need to finish it by the end of the year, but I am planning to visit some family in France, so I think it's good to pack just one book that will last me throughout the trip. As I said, this is Lost Illusion. This is a Spanish edition translated by José Ramón Monreal, and it's about this poet guy who goes 
from a rural town to Paris in hopes of becoming a poet and a literary dandy. I am so excited. I also have Black Snow by Mikhail Bulgakov. It's a brand new translation by Roger Cockrell. So I started reading Master Margarita and was really enjoying it and then I put it down because I got distracted, never went back to it. I am looking forward to going back to that because it is really interesting but this is described as a theatrical novel and it's uh, about a guy I think he's a journalist and he tries to commit suicide but he doesn't make it and then he starts working at a theater it's supposed to be dark and hilarious and it sounds so up up my alley that I just had to bring this instead I have a book in Spanish by Albert Camus it's called weddings slash summer those are the title of the two very long essays i mean this is a slim book but if you consider that there's only two essays in here it is quite long this was actually an impulse buy i bought it literally a week before i left and i couldn't bear the thought of not bringing this with me i just love how camo writes i've read some of his nonfiction, i believe but i've most recently read the plague i really enjoyed the writing and so i definitely want to check this out then a cute little book that I bought exclusively for the trip. I mean, not exclusively for the trip, but I saw it and I just couldn't ignore it. It's two essays by Natsume Soseki, The Bicycle Diaries and Letter to London, from London. Yeah, this is a Spanish edition, but Soseki is translated widely into English and I'm sure his essays are translated as well. These are two essays. Also, I got this with my dad the last day we had an outing together and he wrote some stuff in it for me. So it's just a very prized book. Then a book that I still vividly remember buying at the Heathrow bookshop. I know there are several, but like the bookshop, I think it's actually called like bookshop or something like that, which is lame, but that's what it's called. London Overground, A Day's Walk Around the Ginger Line by Ian Sinclair. I don't know if it's Ian actually, because there is an I there. I Ian? I don't know. What do you think? Anyways, this Sinclair guy also wrote a book that sounds fantastic that I'm going to have to read for a psychogeography class. Yes, that's the thing and I cannot wait. And I bought it because I wanted to take the walk and I thought if I didn't buy it then, then I would forget. It's supposed to be like urban travel writing, which is so up my alley. Then I have Mud and Stars by Sarah Wheeler, travels in Russia with Pushkin and other geniuses of the golden age. This is travel writing. I thought this was going to be more on the literary analysis side and this is definitely more personal memoir slash travel writing meets biography of literary criticism. I am halfway through this, I'm also really enjoying it but I do have a lot of thoughts so look forward to that in my September wrap up. Then very quickly four books that sadly aren't translated to English yet but some of them might. This is an Argentinian book called Contra Marcha by Maria Moreno. Why did I say it like that? Maria Moreno. It's supposed to be autofictional slash fragmented essays, you know, literary reflection, that sort of thing. My alley's there and this book is right up there. Two Lina Meruane books. Yes, too, because I just love her so much. By the way, I have decided that Lina Meruane is definitely one of my favorite authors of all time. This is a nonfiction book by her called To Become a Palestinian Woman. And it's just a memoir, talks about that aspect of her identity because she's Palestinian Chilean living in New York. So there are lots of complexities to her identity. Then I have a book that I think I have mentioned and it's called Zona Ciega or The Blind Zone, which is the nonfiction counterpart to Seeing Red, which is translated to English. This is not yet, but I think it will be because it's nonfiction. It's three essays, but they are very literary. I haven't read them yet, but I have paged through this. I should have said that as well. A lot of these books I've recently sort of checked out in the sense of I've read a couple pages just to know and make sure they were the right choice, if that makes any sense. So yeah, Zona Ciega by Lina Meroni. One last Chilean book, El Hombre del Cartel by Maria Jose Ferrada. Maria Jose Ferrada is translated to English, but with a different novel. I haven't read her yet. I want to read this and that other novel that I don't own, but I can get it through my library in order to feature it in next year's five contemporary Chilean and authors that you must check out. But if you want to check out this year's, you can do so with the link down below. There wasn't a specific time where I decided that it was going to be a yearly thing. It's just that a year 
seems like enough time to have read five Chilean authors and make sure that they are translated into English. Look forward to that. Then something completely different, Bowie's Bookshelf by John O'Connell, The 100 Books That Changed David Bowie's Life, is the subtitle of this nonfiction book that was one of my favorite nonfiction books of last year. Link down below to that video. Why did I bring this? You may ask. I am doing a project on my website that is now being put a bit on hold, but I am still going to link it to the intro post. I hope to update it soon. I am basically reading all these books, but as I read them, I also read the essay dedicated to each book and I explain how I feel about the essay, how I felt about the book. I'm actually very excited. It's a low-key project. It's not something that I need to have completed by a certain date. It's just something that I'm doing. I also have Rain, Four Walks in the English Weather by Melissa Harrison. Okay, um, I have The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. Of course, I had to bring this because it's the September pick for the book club. I don't know if by the time this is up, the review video will Will be up but I haven't finished this yet. I am actually halfway through. I'm halfway through a couple books. Then I have Seneca's On the Shortness of Life. Life is long if you know how to use it, which is part of the Penguin Books Great Ideas series. I love these little books. They are so convenient. They are also... No, I was going to say they were cheap. They are not cheap. I don't know why I thought that, but they are nice to read. I got this. I still remember a Topping and Company bath did this book travel all the way back to Chile and now to London? Yes, it did. Do not dare judge me. Then we have the complete fiction of Virginia Woolf, shorter fiction, shorter fiction, which I am going to have to read a bit of. Did you think that was all? Baby, we are just starting. This video is going to be long, so I hope you enjoy it. Yukio Mishima Star, a short story slash novella, it depends on how you see it, all about fame and desire and it's very Mishima-esque but a bit more current I would say it's like very in the now of that time but I think it still applies today I actually read this right at the end of August so you will have heard about it already link down below to my August wrap-up part two boy this recording out of order I also have a Spanish edition of Humiliation by Paulina Flores I found out through Natalie's channel that this is translated to English, so I'm actually very excited. I would also like to include her in my five contemporary Chilean authors. This author is still not translated, but I hope she will very soon. And that is Daniela Catileo, and this is her trilogy of short stories called Pinyin. She is a young Mapuche author. In case you don't know, Mapuche is the largest indigenous group in Chile. The last of these stories really focuses on that, on Mapuche identity and what it's like to be Mapuche in the 21st century. The first story deals with poverty and drug traffic and the second one deals with sexual abuse and they are heartbreaking but they are so good and I don't know why I am reviewing this because I am going to talk about it in my September wrap-up. It's just it's so good. It's one of the best books I've read all year so that list is going to be impossible. Another book that I read in September therefore I am not going to review right now is another short story collection Bad Behavior by Mary Gateskill. Gatskill. Still haven't looked up how to pronounce her last name. Sorry, Mary. I also brought Representations of the Intellectual by Edward Said. I have not read Orientalism in full, but I've read quite a bit of it for school, and it's just such a great text. I have also read quite a few interviews by Said. These are lectures on ideas of the intellectual and what it means. I also have The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. Yes, I still haven't read this. I am really looking forward to it. It's just that it is a big book and the print is small. I have such high hopes that I want to enjoy it. I will have to read for class though. I think on my second term, so I'm excited to get to this. I bought a biography on Pedro Lemebel by Catalina Mena. Sadly, these little books are not translated to English, but if you read in Spanish, go find these. This is a series, and last year I read the one about Claudia Rao and really enjoyed it. So it's a really nice series, and the books themselves are really nice as well. So if you read in Spanish and are interested in some Chilean people of note, go find one that interests you and order it because they are really good and have 
pictures. Another one I've already read is Tennessee Williams in Tangier by Mohamed Chukri. I finally read some Mohamed Chukri. This is another one of those books that I got a week or two before I was meant to leave and I tried to read it before I left and couldn't but I really wanted to read so in the end I packed it. It was a good decision because this was my first airport book and I really enjoyed this. It's essays. I'm going to talk about it in my September wrap-up which clearly I haven't filmed yet but it's basically encounters that you had with Tennessee Williams while Williams was in Tangier. Basically what it says on the title. Another one that I brought for school is Exercise in Style by Raymond Quino. This is a novel, it's, it's very experimental. I think something happens on a bus and then it's retold in several modes and genres. And I actually bought this so long ago because I was so interested in it, then never read it. But now I will have to read it, so it all worked out. I also brought One Way Street and Other Writings by Walter Benjamin. I mean, I have read some essays in here, but I am really looking forward to reading this cover to cover. There was no reason in particular other than I was in the more philosophically oriented essay mood when I packed my bag and I think I'm still in that mood, so I'm happy about this. I also have The Secret Lives of Cities by Suketu Meta, which is a tiny book that I found and got on sale and very much looking forward to. It's all about urban studies and cities. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I packed this specifically because it's slim, but also because I am considering it for next year's overdue book club. I also brought another tiny book, Writing Paris by Silvia Molloy and Enrique Villamatas. It's about them in Paris and I'm very much looking forward to take this on my trip to Paris. I also brought The Unmapped Country, Stories and Fragments by Anne Quinn. I have a unit on one of her novels, Berg. I bought this so long ago upon recommendation of a wonderful bookseller at Mr. B's in Bath and then I never read it but this is further reading and I thought it was the time. In case I really love that novel, I have somewhere else to go. For the Masters, The Tower by W.B. Yeats, I have read this a number of times. I don't think I'm going to have to read it in full, it's more like a selection but I still brought it over. Also because this does have some of my notes from past readings. Something that might be surprising, but there is a reason. Passing by Nella Larson. If you followed me last year, you know that I read this and was very disappointed by it. All the themes were there, but for me the writing wasn't there. But I will have to reread this because it is compulsory reading for one of my courses. So there you go. Maurice, same thing. I read this. Let's see if studying it makes me love it more. Mrs. Dalloway, which I thought was going to be like key reading, but I just misread the syllabus and it was further reading. I just love this book so much, as you can see. I've read it several times and I would be up to reread it. I also brought A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Same thing, I thought we were going to read this. As it turns out, we're reading Ulysses instead of all the other things we could read. That is something that will happen. Angels in America by Tony Kushner. I bought this at Books Upstairs in Dublin many years ago and I never read it and I've never seen it either. So I'm basically an Angels in America virgin and I brought it because we're going to study it in a course. Then I have three Virginia Wolves. I just brought them because I love Virginia Wolf. To the Lighthouse I brought because it is part of the further reading, I think. I don't know, I just saw it on the syllabus. But I also brought these two because these ones I haven't read. This is The Years and Between the Acts and this is Night and Day and Jacob's Room, Tales of Two Cities, Paris, London and the Birth of the Modern City by Jonathan Conlin. Is anyone surprised that I bought this? Dubliners by James Joyce for the same reasons that I have expressed. It's my favorite book. Although I know I can get this secondhand for probably very cheap, I love this copy. This copy has all my old comments from past rereads. To Chilean books, Nervous System by Lina Meruane, a tiny little book by Pedro Lemebel, Mi Amiga Gladys or My Friend Gladys. I got this because this is his unfinished, sadly, it was published 
posthumously account of his friendship with Gladys Marin, who was a very important activist in Chile during the 80s. I really want to read more about her in general. They were really close friends and I really want to know about that relationship. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I got a nonfiction book, Houses of Fiction, From Pemberley to Bright Shed, Great Houses in English Literature by Phyllis Richardson. I was just in the mood. I am really looking forward to reading this. It is a strong contender for Nonfiction November if I am not buried under coursework. It sounds great. Selected essays of Virginia Woolf for the same reasons that the short fiction. Eric Satie essays about music, musicians, and other memories. I am just fascinated by Eric Satie as we all are. Love speaks it same, gay and lesbian love poems. I need a poetry collection to dip in and out of for next year and this will be it. A Racing in the Sun by Lauren Hansberry. I actually studied this in my undergrad program and I really enjoyed it more than the course itself and I am going to have to study it again. Very much looking forward to it. The Myth of Sisyphus and Other Essays by Albert Camus. Another Penguin Books, great ideas. I brought this specifically because we are going to talk about it on the podcast, but I am in general just very excited to read more Camus. I brought over Margaret Yosenar's Mishima or The Void or The Visions of the Void. I know this is translated into English. I just don't remember what it's called, but it's her essays on Mishima and his literature because she was a great fan. I am so excited for this. I have here Coronation by Jose Donoso. It's a Chilean classic and we're going to review it for the podcast with my friend. So there, the lottery and other stories. Link down below to the announcement where I talked about this being the selection for the October Book Club. Modernism, a guide to European literature, 1890s to 1930s, edited by Malcolm Bradbury and James McFarlane. David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. This tiny little edition that I just talked in there. The Wasteland and Other Poems by T.S. Eliot. I um, bought this on sale because I wanted to read it and then I never did. I've read excerpts but I've never read the whole thing. I really like Eliot. I've read a bunch of his other poems and I really like them. However, I will have to get two other different copies of this. So I'm not sure I'm actually keeping this copy, which sucks because it's a senior classic. And not only I like the commentary, it's also that they won't give me much credit for this. I brought the Willie Cipher comedy essays because I love comedy studies. Sadly, I don't have like a comedy course, but, but I do have some satiric readings. So maybe I'll get to use this at some point. Kreutzer Sonata by Lev Tolstoy. Chile's Nocturne, Nocturne for Chile. Nocturne of Chile, just nocturnes. I don't know if this Bolaño is translated and the name of the translation. A short novel by Roberto Bolaño, The Day of the Locust by Nathaniel West. This one I read and liked but didn't love and I only brought it because it is required reading for one of the courses. I also brought Fun Home and Are You My Mother by Alison Bechtel. Fun Home, I thought I was going to have to study, but now apparently not, so that's disappointing. But I love Alison Bechtel, so I will still reread this, and because I was going to read this, I know I was going to get the craving to reread Are You My Mother, which is the sequel, and I'm also going to be reading her new book, so stay tuned. I also brought The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Genetis because I need to read this for a different challenge and I'm actually looking forward to it. I read Middlesex when I was very young and I was on the path of becoming a serious reader, but I have a suspicion that I might not enjoy it as much now. I feel like Jeffrey Genetis is one of those authors that was very famous at the time, but his reputation hasn't aged well, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Don't laugh at me, but I brought Walden. I just really want to read Walden and I don't know why I don't get to do it. But since I am now finally going to be in spring, during Springathon, I am thinking of reading this outdoors. We'll see what happens. I brought one Fitzgerald out of my collection. It was really hard to settle on which one, but this is Babylon Revisited and other stories because apparently Babylon Revisited is one of his most famous ones and I really want to read it. I brought my college edition of the newest MLA handbook. <laughs> I know this is all online, but there's something very comforting for me to 
be able to reread this and I've read this already in print. Also, I spent most of my undergrad doing linguistics and literary linguistics, which uses APA. I am a little bit Emily Rusty. So I also have this little book of exercises. It is by Carla Santois. Yeah. Some toys and it's in Spanish. I doubt that it's in English, but you can probably get an equivalent to this. I got this at the Museum of Sound back in Santiago. It's a book about building a musical ear. I am very far from perfect pitch. I think partly because before 2020, I didn't really have any musical training whatsoever. I also brought Ada or Ardor, maybe it's Ada by Vladimir Nabokov. This is one of his most famous novels and I really want to read it. One that I read already is Keep the Aspidistra Flying by George Orwell. Really enjoyed this. You will hear more about it on my September wrap up. No, August wrap up. Oh, so you already, you already heard me talk about this well okay here are some of the big guys i brought if on a winter's night at traveler by talo calvino i also have this book that is in spanish by esteban buch called music dictatorship and resistance or musica dictadura y resistencia la orquesta de paris in buenos aires the paris orchestra in buenos aires and it's about daniel barenboim a very famous orchestra conductor and pianist that I really admire and I don't know that much about him actually but like I've liked what I've heard and seen of him and I want to know more also because the political context here is very relevant so I'm just looking forward to more of that. also brought East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I really want to read it hopefully this year. I also brought Just Above My Head by James Baldwin because same thing I just really really want to read this soon-ish. One that again I bought the last time I was gallivanting at Heathrow Airport and then I meant to read by now but I haven't is the Granta 40 year anniversary edition listen to this name list Angela Carter, Kazuo Ishiguro, Todd McEwen, Bruce Chatwin, James Fenton, Primo Levi, Amitav Ghosh, Raymond Carver, Philip Roth, John Gregory Dune, Rizard Kapuscinski, which I am not sure I pronounced correctly but I know exactly who this author is, Joy William, Don DeLillo, John Berger, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Bill Buford, Lindsay Hilsom, Lori Moore, Hilary Mantel, Ian Jack, Edward Said, Diana Adhill, Edwin White, Ved Mera, Alexandra Fuller, Vijavanga Wainaina, Mary Gatskill, Gateskill, I still don't know, Lydia Davis, Jeanette Winderson, Herta Miller. Then I have Northwest by Sadie Smith. I got this so cheap, I think for a dollar or so in Santiago. When I found out that we were going to be reading this for a course, I just could not Bring it. it is the most impractical book to have brought because it is like a big hard cover with like big print well it's good for notes but look at this spacing like this spacing is ridiculous this book does not need to be as big as it is it is not a big book it just looks big but i had already bought it and i refused to get another copy so I brought my own. And the last book, I saved this for last because it has a story. It's called Writing the Research Paper, a handbook. The funny thing is that for some reason, I always thought this was a book about master's programs, as in advice to succeed in your master's program, that sort of thing. But as you can see, that's not what this book is. And I got this book during my first year at university, probably thinking ahead to my fourth year when I had to write my thesis. And since then, I've written a lot of research papers, so I don't really need to read this anymore. But because it's solidified in my mind as a book about masters, I didn't touch this on any of the occasions where I needed to write a research paper. But I already got this! I am not even sure I'm going to consult this at any point or that it will be useful at any point. I was going to bring it for that purpose, so help me Jesus. And that is the story of this book. Those are all the books that I brought with me. Looking around me, I actually think I did better than it felt. A lot of the books are tiny. I'm feeling good, actually. I don't feel now that I brought any books that I now am not interested in. So that was all. That was this video. Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. Let me know if you've read any of these books or are you interested in reading any of these books. If you're interested in reading any of these that are not for a 
course then let me know and we can maybe arrange something for next year and that is all comment if you've read or want to read any of these books or just tell me about a significant book that you either read on a trip brought to a trip or bought on a trip so that's all see you next time this is so ridiculous even for me oh the lemon trilogy that was a good play it was long ago okay two more i have the clockwork a clockwork bleh.